Good morning. Good morning. All praise, glory, and honor be to God, our Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to pray God bless on our pastor, Pastor Barry, and his wife and family. I want to pray God bless on our fallen pastor, Pastor Madison, and his wife and family. And I want to pray God bless on you and your family. Amen? Amen. For those who can stand, would you please stand for the reading of God's will, which is his word. I'll be reading Psalm 100, and it reads, Shout for joy to the Lord, all your earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into him with joy and song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We're, we're his. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faith continues to all generations. Amen. May Lord have a not just for the people of the world. Now we're coming up to our magic place. Amen. 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 Amen.
we praise. Amen. How many of you are glad to wake up this morning and be able to come to the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Millions didn't make it, but you are one of the ones he did. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I know the devil been busy all week long. Amen. So why not come into the house and give God praise? Amen. Hallelujah. Because everything you need, all you got to do is tell God what you need. Because he hears everything that you need. Amen. And you got to believe that he's going to answer your prayer. Amen. Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you this morning. Turn to another neighbor and say, it's so good to see you this morning. Now, if you love the Lord, come on and give him a great big hand clap of praise. to acknowledge our visitors. If you are visiting with us this morning, would you please stand, share with us your name and where you're from. Our family, amen. I'd like to share the following announcements with you this morning. The Deaconess Ministry would like to thank all those that participated with them at the Nothing But Love Sweet Treats table on last Sunday. I'm still trying to recoup. Amen. 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 The women's ministry will be hosting SWAP, S-W-A-P, Sisters with a Purpose, meeting on Saturday, February 25th, 2023, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We're asking everyone, yes, yes, yes. We are asking everyone to bring a new or nearly new accessory item to swap. Jewelry, hats, gloves, and scarves. The attire will be Afrocentric. See you there again on next Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. The church directory is being updated. We are asking that you please return the church directory family data form. That was in the bulletin by Sunday, February 26, 2023. If there are no changes to your information, please indicate that on the form. Also, if you did not get a form, please see the ushers. The completed forms can be returned to Sister Threats, Sister Dickinson, or Sister Hudson. And thank you in advance for your cooperation. Just to reiterate to make sure that everyone has, again, the correct information. Sunday school in person will begin in March next month. Not this month, not next Sunday. But the first and third Sunday, beginning next month in March. First and third Sunday in March. In person. In the education building. Amen. Food for thought. When I say I am a Christian by Maya Angelou. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not shouting I'm clean living. I'm whispering I was lost, now found and forgiven. When I say I'm a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride. I'm confessing, confessing that I stumble and need Christ to be my God. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I am weak and I need his strength to carry on. When I say I'm a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting I have failed and I need God to clean my mess. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I am worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartache, so I call upon his name. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's good grace somehow. May everyone be blessed and have a blessed day. God has been good to you just this week. Can you give him a hand? 
Good morning, St. Mark. Is it not good to be back in the house of the Lord? Amen. One more time. Yes, Amen. We want to thank everybody who have been responsible for getting us to this part of the service today. And we want to uh, give a shout out to the things that we've already done for this month. And we're thankful to God for the success and what has been done. And I just want to ask if we could just govern ourselves accordingly as it relates to the remaining announcements we have for this month. As you know, we are updating the church directory and I'm asking on behalf of the committee that's doing that, if we would please make sure we get one of these forms here and fill it out. Now, my understanding is that even if your information hadn't changed, we're still asking for a response. You can just note that on the form that your information has not changed. And the deadline is next Sunday. Amen. Yes, next Sunday. And Sister Threese is a good contact if you have any questions accordingly. We are thankful God for uh, Reverend Paris on last Sunday. Did you not bless our heart? We're thankful to him for that, and we are appreciative for him coming and sharing with us and how we had a great time on last week. St. Mark, um, when it comes to providing assistance to senior leadership, uh, in particular in the area of preaching, teaching, and administration. Reverend Lange has been very faithful, capable, and competent in that area. And he has definitely demonstrated that these past two years since I've been the pastor. And that's not counting all of the faithful service that he has rendered prior to me becoming pastor. All right. And so with that said, St. Mark, I want to appoint Reverend Lange as the assistant pastor. Very faithful brother, very capable, very competent Amen. in providing assistance to senior leadership. So I'm appreciative of him, thankful to him for the service that he has rendered here at St. Mark, and in particular these past two years, how he has helped me. So we want to say kudos to the community. Every, every Sunday we have a time of intercessory prayer where we go before the Lord on behalf of God's people. And I've asked if Reverend Martin would come and lead us in our intercessory prayer. And then following the intercessory prayer, we will have our Black History Moment. Amen. We'll have our Black History Moment. Reverend Martin. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you know, you look around, you can see better. Thank to the Lord. Thank you to the doctor. Had both of my eyes corrected. Put a new lens. I did what the doctor did, but with the support of the Lord. And uh, it's just one thing that you, we can thank the Lord, I can, for what he did and what he's doing. And uh, just look so different. So much light, so much crisp. But don't get me wrong, I did have to wear the, the cheetah when I get in dark locations. But as the natural with light, you can see really excellent. 
So I just want to thank the Lord for that procedure with our money. I still have stitches in the eye, but uh, it's all good. Just to, uh, you no know, deal with it because sometimes it hit that you got some trash in there. But that's just where it go, and you know, God is good. Yeah. I just want to share that with you all this morning. But you know, uh, when I get going in the crowd, I want to talk about love. We can look around, look at each every, every last one of us. It should be something goodness coming within us, even though a brother and sister may say something, may do something. May act out the wrong way, but it's a way. But it's God's way. And what we need to do, we need to look at ourselves one on one, truthful. We're not supposed to tear one another down. We want to build each other up. Nobody in here should have no fear, cause God ain't about fear. He's about having our faith and keep believing in Him. And we want to show love, not just talking about it. It should be some action. It should be a light and say, you know, my brother, my sister, you may have said that, but with bottom down in my heart, I'm going to do whatever you need, what I'm able to do. If we practice that on a daily basis, you know what will happen? It'd be days in life when you used to do some things and you look around, I don't do it that more. I don't want to have that taste no more. It's the power. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. That's right. It's God. That's right. It's love. Right. And we can just let the love that manifests and we grow. Yeah. Look how Mary St. Mark, the walls get pushed out. Because see, what is good, people come in and we don't act genuine with love coming from the inside. We may say, I love you, yeah. but you, your actions speak louder than words. It should match up what you say. Right. So, because people may look, may not say nothing. It's sometimes you can belittle someone just looking at them. Or you can belittle someone, because somebody may have a lip. Somebody may, may not say some word properly. It may be something that they may not have seen as another sister and brother is saying. It may be something that they may not maybe the walker may be on some kind of uh, handicapped situation. Maybe dealing with some kind of form of sickness. We shouldn't look over there and prejudge one another. We should give everybody equal love. If we say we love our law, we should bounce that loving like ourselves, love one another. But I just want to share that with you all today. Just think about that. If you want to go far, you will do it right away. You got to follow the law. Let's go in prayer. Yes. Father, Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time just to thank you once again to give another opportunity that we can share the love with one another that you've been given to us. So Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. Not just this day, but day to come. So Lord, going through this week, we may have some things came up from last week, but we just want to thank you. We know that you were with us, that you blessed us, you touched us. We just want to give you the time. Just say, we love you, my Lord. So we come at this time. I want you to bless this service. I want you to bless every member in this building right now, even not in this building. It may be some youngster or uh, even older thinking about what I should do. But Lord, we just want to look at you and you're going to direct our path. 
you just want to thank you because you're the guidance. You the only one that can guide us in the right direction. We just want you to just be with us. Say, Lord, we're coming to the time want to touch our pastor Barry, yeah. him and his wife and family, yeah. and our former pastor, Pastor Madison, his wife and family, and other social members. Yeah. But a special prayer for our brother, Brother Range. Yeah. Just keep him encouraged. Yeah. It's it going to work out because when God hands on whatever, it's yeah. going to even get, get better. Not just better, it's going to be great. Yeah. So, Lord, we just want to trust him, brother. Keep him encouraged. And not just stop right now, but keep moving up the hill. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. Lord, we come at this time. You may be so sick and shedding, dealing with some form of illness or whatever. Lord, trust them. Give them the strength that they're going to be okay. Because your power is the best medicine that we can have. Yeah. So, we just want to thank you, Lord. Because we come at this time that they have a change of heart, Lord. Your power can make that change in each one of us. But we gotta want that change. Lord, let you come in us and change us because I know Brother Mark is not being perfect, but I know through the years as I depend on you that you change my heart on a daily basis. Because I know I'm a grow in your spirit to be a better, not just a, a man, a husband, but a better soldier for my Lord. So I know just let him and you clean me up. I know all my sisters and brothers, let you do the same thing, you be a new beginning. But you know, that we just don't feel that we are so perfect. We're not the only one person that's alive in Christ Jesus. So Lord, we just ask, anybody feel that they need some kind of cleaning up? It's your power. Then we will make everything be right. You want to build a church up like you want to build. Not by Brother Martin, but by our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. We just want to thank you and encourage one another. We're going to stay in this. We're going to stay together. We're going to pray together. We're going to love one another. This is a new beginning. We just want to say, look at one another and say, I love you and thank you. St. Paul, Missionary Baptist Church, because the power of the Lord will always be and I just want to say, we're going to get a suspended word from our Lord. We're going to give them the guidance and give. I know we curious them that I know it's going to be powerful where it will be. Because our Lord, everything that comes in is so powerful, unbelievable. But guess what? We're going to hold on. We're going to love one another. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. about an ordinary woman doing extraordinary things right. and making history. Her name is Mrs. Oprah Lee. She's known as the grandmother of the Juneteenth National Holiday yeah. Celebration. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Lee currently resides in Fort Worth, Texas. She is an activist, an advocate, and an educator for making Juneteenth, a national United States holiday. She received her bachelor's degree from Wiley College, her master's degree from North Texas State University. She is the oldest living board member of the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation. And she's currently working on two other major projects. For over 45 years, she dreamed of one day of commemorating a day of freedom, a day the president will sign a bill that would make celebrating freedom from slavery a law. <clears throat> that dream became a re reality. On June 17, 2021, Ms. Lee was on hand to witness President right. Joe Biden right. sign the Juneteenth right. National Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> now a national holiday. At the age of 96, she's still making history, walking and telling her story. In January of this year, 
She was a nominee for the Nobel Prize. On February the 8th, she celebrated another milestone. She uh, watched the unveiling of her portrait at the state capitol in Austin, Texas. Lawmakers gave her a standing ovation. This was truly an honor for her as the seven black person whose portrait will hang in the Senate chamber. The first one was U.S. Representative Barbara Jordan. In closing, I had an opportunity to meet Miss Lee, listen to her tell her amazing stories of why she walked for Juneteenth. There was, that was a rewarding experience for me. I, after re reading her biography and following her on social media, I would like to say, Miss Oprah Lee is a legend in her own time. Thank you. today on Miss Ella Josephine Baker. Miss Baker was born December 13, 1903. She was an African American civil rights, human rights activist. Ella Josephine Baker was born in North Fork, Virginia. At the age of seven, following a race riot in which black shipyard workers were beaten. Her mother took the family to her hometown in Middleton, Littleton, North Carolina, and her father st stayed in Northport to continue working on as a steamship uh, worker. Growing up, Miss Baker listened to her maternal grandmother stories about slavery, slave revolts, and women in the old days learning firsthand about the oppression of black people has shaped her sense, sense of social injustice. After high school, Ms. Baker attended Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina, graduating as valedictorian of her class. In 1927, at the age of 24, she moved to New York, where she worked as a domestic and waitress before she got her first job as an editorial assistant at the Negro National News. Living in New York during the Harlem Renaissance, Baker pointed out Baker's point of view evolved into action, and she began to live her long dedication to political activism. Following graduation, Ms. Baker moved to New York City. By 1930, she organized the Young Negroes Cooperative League, a group designed to advance the cause of businesses owned by black and colored citizens. The idea was to combine the buying power of business to help create economic stability at the beginning of the Great Depression. This cooperative also stood against white-owned businesses that would frequently try to undersell black-owned companies. As the Great Depression grew deeper, Ms. Baker realized that young African Americans particularly faced dire economic situations. Not only were they discriminated against, but now they faced horrific conditions of poverty, homelessness, and unrest. Ms. Baker saw the economic hardship as a catalyst for change. As she organized groups for women in the New York City, one of her favorite quotes were, her frequent saying became, people cannot be free until there is enough work in this land to give everybody a job. Right. In 1931, she became a member of the Young Negro Cooperative League, which formed cooperatives 
that provided affordable services to its members. Soon she was appointed in the National Director of the YNCL. She also taught classes on consumer education, African history, and labor history as part of the New Deal's Work Progress Administration. Ms. Baker was known as the mother of civil movement. She was a major force in shaping the development of the civil rights movement in America. Ms. Ella Baker was a premier behind the scene organizer, co-founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, headed by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr and inspiring force behind the creation of the student nonviolent. What problems did Ms. Baker face? Like many Americans today, she faced discrimination many times in her life. When she was only three, she was forced to flee from the hometown with her family after a race riot led to the death of African Americans in her community. Some of Ms. Baker's famous quotes, it says, in order to see where you're going, we not only must remember where we have been, but we must understand where we have been. Mm -hmm. She also stated, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Until the killing of black men, black mothers' sons become as important to the rest of the country as the killing of white mother's sons, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it happens. Right. Oppressed people, whatever their level of education, have the ability to understand and interpret the world around them, to see the world for what it is and move to transform it. Another quote she stated, give light to the people and they will find their way. One of the things that has, one of the things that has to be faced is a process of waiting to change the system. How much we have got to do to find out who we are, where we have come from, and where are we going? Remember, we're not fighting for the freedom of the Negro alone, but for the freedom of the human spirit, a larger freedom that encompasses all mankind. All right. And I'll leave with you, Miss. Baker said, she didn't break the rules, but she just came to change them. Mm -hmm. Everyone have a good day. Mm -hmm.
music ministry. What a timely, timely selection. Let's give it up for our Black History Moment presenter today. Sister Reeves and Sister Hudson. Job well. I know it might be a little brisk in here this morning. It was a little brisk last week, and we are aware of it. We're, we're working on the problem. The bills have been paid. The, have been paid. the atmosphere has been paid, but we're working on the problem. So if you would, bear with us, Lord willing, hopefully next week this time, we'll be a little more comfortable. I want to be before you alone, but I do want to share with you what God has given to me. If you would, turn with me to a familiar passage of scripture found in the book of Genesis. Now, if we have a hard time finding the book of Genesis, <laughs> we, we, we need to hurry up and start Sunday school. If you're having a hard time finding Genesis chapter 25. And if you will stand with me and as I read from the New International Version from Genesis chapter 25, I want to read verses 27 through 34. Genesis 25, 27 through the end of that chapter. Verse 34. And if you don't want you to say amen. amen. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man standing among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, oh first, oh first, you have to sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. If I had to put a title to this feeble message today, it would simply be this, a generational blessing. All right, all right. A generational blessing. blessing. In his book, titled, Taking Care of Business, Lee Jenkins point, pointed out how, how God through the scriptures consistently takes a multi-generational approach. You know, Lee Jenkins points out how God, through the scripture, consistently takes a multi-generational approach. We see it in the judgment on Cain and his descendants. Yeah. We see it recorded in the genealogies found in the gospel. St. Mark, God consistently looks forward with our descendants in mind. And his promises are consistently spoken in terms of a generational blessing yeah, yeah. on our children's children. All right. All right. 
So St. Mark says God is generational. How do we treat a generational blessing? Can I share with you real quickly three things when it comes to a generational blessing? The answer to the question in part is we treat a generational blessing with good choices. Right, right. How many of us agree that Esau choosing a bowl of stew <laughs> over his birthright was a bad choice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a bad choice that he made to choose a bowl of stew over his, his birthright. St. Mark, just like presidential elections have consequences, and I really wish some people in this country would, would just wrap their mind around that That's fact, right. Right. that when you have a presidential election, you have a candidate that wins, yeah. right. and you have a candidate that loses. Yeah. Right. And a candidate that wins gets to occupy the White House, yeah. and he gets to promote the policies that he ran. Right. Just like presidential elections have consequences, yeah. our choices do too. Yeah. 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 Say, Mark, wherever you are right now in life, individually speaking, yeah. not collectively speaking, yeah. wherever I am right now in life, whether that be in a good place, or whether that be, unfortunately, in a bad place, it is in part because of the choices that you and I made five years ago, yeah. All right. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if you are in a sweet place right now, or if I'm unfortunately in a bad place right now, it's in part because of the choices. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us know yeah. that the choices we make have consequences? Yeah. Yeah. Good and bad. Yeah, yeah. That's why that's why we have to be judicious. When it comes to a generational blessing, we have to be careful how we treat it. Because if not, we're gonna find ourselves like Esau. As described in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, crying. After having realized his mishandling of his birthright. Yeah. Yeah. And the text helps us to see that all the crying in the world <laughs> could not change the consequences yeah. right, right. of the choices that he made. Yeah. Yeah. He went back to his father Isaac after having did what he did in our text and said, Father, you don't have another, but he said, I, I, I've given all the blessings I have. I don't have nothing else, nothing else to give you. Right, right. We have to know that choices have consequences. How do us know that immediate gratification may seem cheap, mm -hmm. but the actual cost yeah. is exorbitant? Yeah. Do I have a witness in the house today? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we can't we can't choose the immediate over the ultimate. Right. We, we need to be able to see. The big picture. We need to be able to see long term. And and, and and if we and if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we run the risk of losing the grace that God has given us. Yeah, man. How do we treat a generational blessing? With good choices. Can I also suggest to you today, and I'm not gonna be long, I I, I came with my running shoes on. I really I really didn't come to stay long. I, I'm like you. I, I I got some things and I want to go do. <laughs> but we treat a generational blessing not only with good choices but also with good character. When it came to the birthright, as recorded in our text and as recorded in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, a birthright was an honor. Yeah. 
that was given to the firstborn son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a inheritance that was twofold. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the birthright, the birthright was an honor that was given to the firstborn son and it was an inheritance that was twofold. The, the birthright assured the firstborn son the position of authority. All right. mm -hmm. So that when one day he would have the honor of becoming the leader yeah. of the family. Yeah. Yeah. As the firstborn son, the birthright assured him that one day he would be the patriarch of the family. Yeah. He will be the one who will give leadership to the family. He will be the one in a position of authority. Mm -hmm. But it also assured the firstborn son not only a position of authority, but a double portion. Yeah. Do I have any Bible students in the house today? Yeah. A double portion of his father's assets. Yeah. Yeah. So as the firstborn son Esau had the assurance by virtue of the birthright that one day he would have a position of authority and that he would get a double portion of his father's assets. <laughs> but the text helps us to see that none of that meant anything to Esau. Because the last verse of our text tells us he despised his birthright. How many people today are despising their birthright? Mm -hmm. Lee Jenkins in the same book, Taking Care of Business, pointed out how there is a such thing as not only inward wealth, but also outward wealth. Mm -hmm. Are, are y'all with me today saying that? Yes, sir. He says that inward wealth, when it comes to true wealth, true wealth always begins with what we can't see. He says inward wealth is that special something that God entrusts to each of us. Things like spiritual knowledge is wealth. Things like relationships mm -hmm. is well. How many of us know that peace of mind? How many of us know that peace yes. is well? Yes. Ideas, ideas, ideas is well. Somebody said that health is well. Do I hear Yeah, creative activities is wealth. Inward wealth is that special something that God entrusts to all of us. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins says that wealth is always an inward realization before it becomes an outward manifestation. Yeah. Yeah. An example of that is Amazon. Mm. Anybody ever heard of Amazon? Yeah. I know at the Bears household. <laughs> we, we, we know Amazon real well. And, and I even think that they have our address embedded in the hard drive of their database. Because every day, every day, they at our house dropping off something. I mean, these boys are so cold blooded. As soon as my wife pushed the order button, I heard a doorbell ring. That's how cold blooded these boys are. Before Amazon became a multi-billion dollar company, some 29 years ago, it was an idea to Jeff Bezos. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some 29 years ago, I don't know where he was, could have been in his man cave at home, sitting in his man cave, and, and he came up with the idea of Amazon. 
And what started out as an idea 29 years ago has now manifested into a multi-billion dollar company. That's because true wealth starts with what we can't see on the inside. True wealth is an inward realization before it becomes an outward Manifest. And what starts out as an ideal can eventually become a multi-billion dollar company. Yeah, yeah. Jenkins says this is the reason why multi-millionaires can go broke. And then bounce right back. Why? Because wealth is not what they have on them. Come on. Wealth is what they have in them. Yeah, come on. All of us in here today have some form of inward wealth yeah, yeah. that God has entrusted to each of us, whatever it may be. For some it may be spiritual knowledge, others it may be relationships, for others it may be ideas. All of us have some form of inward wealth that God has entrusted to all of us. But like Esau, Come on. all of us don't recognize it. Right, right, right. 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 See, the inward wealth that Esau had was relationship right. to his father, who was called Isaac. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't realize the wealth that he had. Yeah, yeah. But in addition to inward wealth, Jenkins said there is a such thing as outward wealth. Yeah, right? Check this out, St. Right. Mark. Income does not equal wealth. How many of us know that you can make a million dollars, but it's another thing to be worth a million dollars? That's because income is paycheck related. Am I making any sense this morning? That's because income is paycheck related, whereas wealth is asset related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, 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 there is a difference between the two. And we can make whatever we make, but it's more important about what do we keep. Right, right. The only way you increase your net worth is not through liabilities, but we increase our net worth through assets. Pastor Ben, what are you trying to say? Here's what I'm trying to say right here. Come on. Here's where I've been trying to go right here. Come on. The birthright was Esau's net worth. Right. The right. birthright was Esau's wealth. Yeah. Yeah. The birthright was Esau's asset. Yeah. But that knucklehead didn't have enough sense to yeah. realize yeah. Yeah. to the point where he gave it away. Yeah. The flaw in Esau's character was that his belly was his God. Y'all missing this. Y'all missing it. All he was talking about was feed me. All he was talking about, I'm hungry. All he was concerned about was satisfying his belly to the point where he despised his birthright. He cared nothing about the things of God. Who in the house today talking about just feed me, just feed me? Who in the house today talking about it's all about? Uh, are y'all with me today? But can I suggest to you today, here's what good character does for you and me. Good character keeps us from being like Esau. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good character keeps us from being short-sighted. Yeah, yeah, good character keeps us from being impatient. Good character keeps us from being driven by our flesh. How am I going to treat a generational blessing? I need to treat it with good choices. Mm. Because the choices that I make have consequences. Yeah. Yeah. I need to also treat it with good character. Yeah. Because character helps to keep me from being so short-sighted. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps me from being able just to see the nose on my face. I can see beyond the nose. Yeah. Good character keeps me from being driven by my flesh. Yeah. Good character keeps me from being impatient. Mm -hmm. To where I, I won't go and just give away. Yeah. 
my birthright. Before I hold you too long, because I did say I, I brought my running shoes. But can I suggest that another way we treat a generational blessing is with genuine commitment. It's important to remember, St. Mark, that God is not just the God of Abraham. Yes, sir. Are y'all with me today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible tells us that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have any Bible students in the house? Yeah. Yeah. What am I saying here? When God looks at you, mm -hmm. and when God looks at me, he sees three generations in us. Come on. Right. When he looks at you, when he looks at you, when he looks at me, he don't just see Barry. Right. He see three generations in there. Mm. That's why when it comes to handling the resources, whatever God has invested in me that he has entrusted me with, that's why I got to be judicious in how I administer those resources to ensure that they have a positive generational outcome. Yeah. Yes. Can I suggest you today, St. Mark, that, that one of the main reasons that keep Black families playing catch-up. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is Black History Month, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's make some Black History Month. Yeah. One of the reasons that keep most of our Black families playing catch-up mm -hmm. is single generation consumption. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was Esau's issue. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that was Esau's issue. Single generation consumption. Every dime we make, Come on. Yeah. we spend it on ourselves. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Esau's birthright was consumed just on Esau. Right, right. And I'm going to text y'all. Right. Every dime we make, we spend it on ourselves only to leave the generations behind us having to restart instead of having a head start. Come on. And, and, and we've got the nerve, the audacity to try to get mad at all the other subgroups, all the other ethnic groups. we got the nerve to try to get mad at everybody else. When the reality of it all, it ain't them that we ought to be getting mad at necessarily. Yeah, Some of that blame. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are y'all with me? Yeah. yeah. We have the issue of single generation consumption mm -hmm. to the point where the next generation behind us having to restart all over again. That's right. yeah. Whereas other subcultures, their descendants have a head start. Yeah, yeah. According to research, St. Mark, according to research, blacks only represent about 13 and a half percent of the U.S. population. A am I kind of in the ballpark? Yes, yeah. 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 We only represent, Carl, about 13 and a half percent yeah. of the U.S. population. But we're leaders. Come on in the consumption of goods and services. Right, right. What? Wow. How can that be? Yeah. Isn't something wrong with that picture? Yeah. How can we only represent about 13 and a half percent of the U.S. population, but we are leaders mm -hmm. in the consumption hmm. of goods so, and services? All right. well, it's been said according to a Black Star Research Project, that a dollar stays in the black community on average of six days. Whereas a dollar stays in the Jewish community an average of 20 days. Whereas a dollar stays in the Asian community an average of 30 days. What? You mean to tell me that a dollar stays in the Asian community an average of 30 
in the Jewish, an average of 20, but in our community, only an average of six days. I'm like R.A. Vernon when he said, when, when, when money comes in our community, it just leaves. Right, right, right. 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 It, it, it just leaves our community. It just leaves our hands. And it's not like our money don't matter. Just like our lives matter, our money does too. Because research says that that blacks spend more than a trillion dollars a year on goods, on the consumption of goods and services. That is enough money to support some small country's economy. A trillion dollars? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sam, all I'm trying to say is this. And I could be wrong, but this is very commentary, right? Everybody is making money off of us but us. That's right. Our Hispanic brothers, hello, somebody. Our Hispanic brothers are making money off of us with lawn care. Every time they put up to our house, Cut our yards, trim our trees, prune our trees, our shrubs, and what have you. They make money off of us. Not count all the, the carpentry and construction, what have you. Our Asian brothers and sisters are making money off of us. In the dry cleaning industry. Don't get me started with the nail industry. Don't get me started with the pedicures and the manicure. manicure. And, and, and then to top it off, they, all the beauty supply, all the beauty supply, all the beauty supply. And am I telling the truth today? Everybody making money off us. For us. And then our Caucasian brothers are making money off of us with branch banking. Every time we go to a bank, we're not going to no black bank, we're going to our Caucasian bank. Right, right. Everybody is making money. When are we going to get to where we're going to stop enriching everybody else? Come on. And start enriching ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Do I have a witness here today? There's yeah. nothing wrong with doing business with our uh, Caucasian, our Hispanic, and our Asian, but there's nothing wrong with doing business with them and them making money. But when are we going to start doing some business and making some money for our family? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making a call, I'm putting a call out today. I'm putting a call out today for those who may not have already started, but I'm putting a call out today for some genuine commitment. Come on. I'm making a call today for those who haven't already for some genuine commitment yeah. to God's plan for us. And he does have a plan for us. That's right. Proverbs 13 tells us that a good man yeah. Leads an inheritance to his children's children. Yeah. Not just to his children, but to his children. When God looks at you, he sees three generations. A good man leads an inheritance to his children's children. And I want to be a good man. Anybody want to be a good man? And for that matter, a good woman. A good man, a good woman leads an inheritance to their children. Children and I want to be that kind of person. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't want to be like the song that the temptation sang. <laughs> Papa was the song. <laughs> Wherever he laid his hat. <laughs> and when he died, all he left us what? Alone. I don't want that to be my theme song. Do I have any brothers in the house? That ain't gonna be my theme song. When y'all say ashes to ashes, dust to dust over me, y'all ain't gonna be able to say that all Barry left was uh, us alone. No, Barry gonna leave an inheritance yes, sir. to his children, yes, sir. children, so that my children and my grandkids, my great grandkids, won't have to sleep start, but they will have a head start. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. This black history, let's keep on making some good black history. Yes, sir. 
Let's know how to treat generational blessings that God has invested in all of us. Yes, sir. And to treat it the right way, we have to make sure we make good choices. Yes, sir. Yeah. We're going to have to have some good character. That's going to have to be some genuine commitment. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, we won't be like Esau, finding ourselves crying yeah. Yeah. after having realized that we mishandled our birthright. Give God a hand. The doors of the church are open, have been for more than 2,000 years. Brother Barnett had to leave. But we still want to extend the opportunity for someone who may not have accepted Christ. If you're here today, this time is for you. Our focus right now is on extending the invitation to discipleship. If you're that person today, who does not know Christ in the right to, this is your opportunity. If you're here, slow down. So for the last four weeks or so, the Lord has slowed me down and you know, I made a more of a commitment to Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I think this year in 2023 we ought to make a commitment to Jesus Christ. Because when we make that commitment and have that relationship with Jesus Christ, there are supernatural things that occur in your life that you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. Things that are unexplainable. And that's what God has been doing in my life. He's been doing things that are unexplainable. Yeah. And I, I just want to just be committed here to uh, St. Mark Baptist Church. I thank uh, Pastor Range and uh, others for helping me out and doing this particular time, Pastor. And uh, I'm going to support Pastor Barry. I'm behind him 100%, uh, he and his wife. Uh, and I think we ought to be committed uh, to Jesus. But number one, our commitment to be Jesus Christ. Not your husband, not your wife. You have to be committed to Jesus Christ. And when you commit to Jesus, if if I be lifted up, that's what Christ says, yes. I'll draw all men unto me. Yes. And we got to lift up Jesus Christ because we are talking about kingdom business. This year it has to be about kingdom business, about growing uh, the, the church and, and, and grow, make a commitment to him. First of all, make the commitment to Jesus Christ. Right. Can I just pray for the church? Let me pray. Let me pray. Let me pray. All right. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we want to come now. We want to pray not only for St. Mark, but we pray for Reverend Griffith. Lord, we ask that you would minister to him in such a way that he can realize the purpose that you have for his life. And Lord, we want to pray for his welfare, his well-being. And we claim the victory in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, brothers, for your assistance during this time. Now we are ready to receive from you your offering, and as soon as we have received your offering, we will bless the offering and issue the benefits of the ushers of our sisters at this time. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.